Uh, first on the agenda, topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance of this meeting. Anything? The Housing Authority has nothing. Can you turn your volume up when you're... Uh, can't hear you. Can't hear you. Can you turn it? It, it goes in the camera, sorry. <coughs> oh, sorry. That was here. All right, uh, number two, the approval of the minutes. Have everybody read the minutes? I've read them and I have some questions. Okay, John. Um, I, I don't think they're very businesslike, mm -hmm. and I think there's an awful lot of editorializing in them. So uh, I'm, that's, that's how I feel. I'd be interested in how the other uh, commissioners feel about them. Any other discussion on the minutes? Oh, I'll comment that um, mm -hmm. it, it's almost like a transcript of the uh, <clears throat> of the meeting rather than the minutes of the meeting. So I find these huge block paragraphs of single space type difficult to read. And I wonder if we could make an effort to stick to what real minutes are usually, which is uh, the items that were on the agenda, they came up, main, main points that were made, <coughs> and how the vote was taken, and not ex everybody who said what and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You guys might disagree, but uh, I've never seen minutes like this before, these huge blocks of uh, single state, single, it's a lot of work, so whoever's doing it, thank you very much, but uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's very dis difficult for me to read. All right. Harry, you want to say uh, My question is, who puts these minutes together? Pam Creek. Okay. Uh, following the um, open uh, uh, virtual meeting, uh, the November 22nd, we don't have roll call votes. We just have votes three to one, three to one, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I would like to, with the detail in here, would like to go back and listen to the recording, and as I listen to the uh, recording, uh, go through what's what's being um, written here from the recording. There seems to be, in my opinion, some inaccuracies that I would like to to correct. But I want to go through the uh, the recording that was done on that meeting day uh, on the December twentieth uh, minutes. There was a seven-minute discussion. Although there was no quorum and no meeting, there was a seven-minute discussion, and comments were made about commissioners not attending that meeting. Uh, I think there's a little more information that needs to be put on the December 20th, so I'm not about to approve that. And December 27th, again, there's some uh, differences of opinion on what um, is in the minutes and what I recollect, but I, again, uh, that meeting was recorded. I want to go back and listen to that. I would move, uh, we would table these minutes till a full review could be done, and then I'd be satisfied and happy. But I'm not about to pass them this morning. I'll second your motion. Mr. <clears throat> Chairman, can I just uh, comment? So the meeting minutes are absolutely different from any other board I've ever been on. Uh, but our meetings have been absolutely different. And what Pam uh, Creek has been doing is going by the recordings from public TV. So she's sitting there listening, and to the best of her ability, she's writing it verbatim. But if you'd like to check that, that's absolutely within your purview. So the motion has been made to second. All right. Yes, I have a comment. Uh, I, I agree these are not typical meetings uh, minutes, but we don't have typical meetings. Some, excuse me, would you please Oop. take your phone call <clears throat> outside? Yeah. Rich, would you? No, that's Judy. Judy? We can't hear. <coughs> yeah, Judy, put down a phone, please. I don't, I don't care about the hearing. Fine, if that's how Judy is. But there, there was talking, and it's disturbing. Please. Okay. So, uh, some minutes for meetings are very brief. It's just the agenda topic, the vote, a little bit about the discussion. But if you'll read back in the minutes of Hadley Housing Authority Board of Commissioners over the years, there are indeed meetings that are very descriptive and several pages long because of the discussion that was had. The discussion is often very, very important going forward 
to document who said what and why. So the more, the more complete and accurate minutes are of meetings wherein it's required, the better boards of commissioners going forward, either this same makeup or other boards going forward know what happened. So I, I, I like the more detailed, uh, the more detailed minutes. Well, Mr. Chairman, right. yes. uh, Reese's concerns can be met <coughs> by viewing the meeting that Alex is recording. Yeah. 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 Um, my point. My point is that Reese's. It seems to me that my that her concern can, can be met by no easily meeting. by viewing the YouTube. Rec record of the meeting that Alex is recording, but what these guys are talking about is different, and that is keeping the minutes more business. -free. So both parties can win. My my response is is that we have Hadley Media post our videos of our board of commissioner meetings on YouTube. YouTube is a privately owned company that can take anything down at any those. time. This is an open meeting. The YouTube you video is not a That's good. legal uh, mechanism for minutes. Thank In you. other words, yes, I can watch the video, and indeed I have. However, the minutes are the legal requirement, and they, the minutes need to accurately reflect what has happened, the exchanges, what has been said, et cetera. Okay. All right. But there was... There had been a motion made and seconded to table the minutes for this and when, with no vote. Yes. So, well, we, oh. can, we could vote to table. Yes, that's what I'm going to bring up. Oh, you, I'm you want to vote to table the minutes? Yes. I made that motion. There was a second. I seconded it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Three. Three to two. Opposed? You have to ask for opposed. Opposed. Aye. We have two. Yeah. All right. Roll call. Yeah. We have a roll call vote. I'm going to open one door. That's right. Because it's an open meeting. Oh, yeah. We can't keep the door closed. Oh, we All right. Can't hear that here. There's no noise out there. Like you can interrupt the area. Okay. All right. All right. It's been tabled. Vote was approved to table it. Uh, board correspondence. Any correspondence from the board? Mr. Yeah. Chairman, I just want to, uh, I don't see on the agenda <clears throat> that we finished our business with the open meeting law complaint and the board response. I don't know if it comes under board correspondence. I'll defer to our fellow commissioner, Risa Friedman there, that uh, we need to respond and finish that uh, complaint that was brought against uh, the board for the open meeting law violation. I don't know whether that comes here or does that come later in the meeting? Board, okay. course, uh, board commissioner's discussion. Okay. Commissioner's discussion. All Thank right, you we'll very later much. On in the I'll wait for them. Thank you. All right. Any other commissioner uh, board correspondence? No. All right. Move on. Uh, executive director's report. The <coughs> financials. The warrant report. So we have two warrant reports. We have the warrant report from November and the warrant report for December. The warrant report in November was tabled, <coughs> or actually was voted down, voted to not vote on it. <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Yes. If I may. Um, Back in September, after we had our tenant rep, Risa, join us in, at the, uh, her August appointment, I was uh, nominated to be the treasurer of this uh, body. And I accepted that, and nothing happened. I wasn't approached for anything else or whatever. Um, and then in December, I removed myself from that because of 
not having a contract and all the other shenanigans going along. But as you know, I referee basketball games, and the other day I happened to do a game, and Kristen Yazerski, uh, I guess it's good that I'm not the treasurer because it appears that she still is. And she said to me, uh, that you aware that I am still the treasurer and my name is still on the checks and the bank accounts? And I said, no, I was not aware of that because they asked me to be the treasurer. Uh, she said she was going to send some correspondence to you for this meeting today that she needs to be removed as the treasurer. And this goes back nine months now. So I would like some explanation of why she's still on uh, the bank accounts and you're using her name in, in, in paying bills with the checks. I don't know who answers that question, but I'm very confused by that. Well, I'm very confused too. I have no read. I don't Wait, know. So we did just get the email. No. I was advised of that situation yesterday from Kristen. Kristen reached out to the housing authority, <clears throat> and there's a mix up between the paperwork from Peoples into the new Greenfield Savings account. So unfortunately, her names were still on. They will be removed today. We need to get other commissioners that are on there. Um, in most housing authorities, all commissioners are listed as a signer. <clears throat> But in this housing authority, traditionally, it's only been two, and we need to correct that because anything can happen at any point. Uh, thank you for so that. So it was but a I, mistake. It thank was a you mistake. for that. Yeah, thank you for that. But I'd still like to know why it wasn't done back in May when she notified everybody that she was resigning. She wasn't going to seek a five-year term. And why wasn't it taken care of back in May? It was overlooked. It was a mistake. By whom? By the accounting department. The accounting department. And that would be who? Kerry and Gary DePace so we don't or you? Talk, we don't talk about municipal employees okay, in an open meeting. Okay, that's fine. Meeting. I just we like don't. to know who? The accounting department of the housing authority. The accounting department. It would not department. be Gary DePace. Gary DePace does not cut checks. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So it is the Amherst Housing Authority. Okay. So, so can I ask a follow-up? Um, if uh, Christian Zersky is name is being stamped on checks that we're currently paying can't hear you. who you. if 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 the former treasurer is being uh, used to stamp the <clears throat> checks that we're currently paying my question is who is approving the payment so the mr. chair may I answer Go ahead, yeah. So the, the process is that the invoices come into the housing authority and then I approve them and then the checks go out after the fact. So the checks are then, the invoice is approved first. If, it's in, if it goes through Bruce's department, if it's for materials, he'll say, you know, make sure that it's the correct number of stoves <coughs> or refrigerators and approve it. If it's Mary's department for envelopes, she says, yes, that's what was ordered. So we, I approve this, um, the invoices, and then the accounting department cuts the checks. It's all electronic and sends them out. They're electronics. It's not a physical stamp. It's, a, it's an electronic so stamp. So what is the purpose of us voting to accept them if you're already authorizing the payment? Because the board has to, by, by the auditing guidelines and the accounting guidelines, guidelines. The, board, the board does need to approve them. Well, uh, and approving them this way is the way it, it this is uh, acceptable for accounting procedures through Mr. the audits. Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. I, I would like to um, uh, have that procedure checked by a third party, if you don't it, mind. It is. It's checked by the auditor. And we, we well, who's the just, auditor? Malcolm and Associates. Excuse me, for Hadley, it's Lisa Fallon, CPA. And, and it is checked. You've been given the audits. We passed the audit. No, what, what I mean is I would like to be assured that the commissioners have to approve a bill that's already been approved and paid. <clears throat> it's one of the responsibilities of, it's the fiduciary responsibility is to approve <clears throat> the finances. Okay, and I'd like to have that verified. Can you it's cite me? Details of Can you cite me? Uh, give me a citation. Maybe not now, but email me a citation. She's checking something out there. Okay, can you can stop the slide?
If you'd like to move this down, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go call Gary DePace and get the exact. Well, I, I'm willing to, in the interest of time, I'm willing to move that we table this until that's resolved. So, but, sir, I have to advise that this is the second time that the, the, main, the minutes, the financials from November would have been tabled. <clears throat> that is an audit finding. Fine. The, no, I know you say fine, but you seem to be very worried about an audit finding for board training, which is very minimal compared to not following through with the fiduciary responsibility of the board. We're, we're talking finances. These bills have to be approved. Every board, every 248 housing authorities across the Commonwealth, this is the standard agenda. Board members approve the finances, the month-to-month -month finances. Both the bills paid, both the <coughs> quarterly reports, monthly reports from the treasurer, treasurer this is your responsibility. This is your number one responsibility. Show me. Why did you take, if you took the training, how come you don't understand this? It isn't in the training. It is. It says your number is fine then, fiduciary. I don't want to argue with you. No, please, I know. Please just show me. That's all I'm asking. Okay. So, and you want to move on to another agenda no. item? I'm just going to go make a quick You, you call don't have to do it. No, we do it. because I don't want to get another audit finding because the Board of Commissioners don't understand what their responsibilities okay. are and why you are appointed to this position. All right. As you wish. We'll go, we'll go through the, skip the financials right now. We'll go to property manager's report. <laughs> That'd be. We'll give the report on that. Mary. She's that? Oh, there, there she is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so right now we have four vacancies. We have two here at Golden Court and we have two over at the um, Berkway properties. So one of the Berkways is all set to be um, rented up and we are looking at a um, capital improvement, so which means that it's going to go through our capital project, um, an RCAP project, to get that unit up and running. Um, or up and so okay. Okay? Yep. Um, and then the accounts receivable. That's where we stand in accounts receivable. If you have any questions, yeah. any questions for Mary from the board? Mr. Prime Minister, so I need to understand this stuff. You have a, a unit that's ready now, mm -hmm. yes. but you, and you said it's also part of a capital improvement project. We have two vacancies over at Berkeley. Yeah. One needs to be turned over, so the tenant line. Needs to be get it needs to get it ready for the new tenant. Okay. The uh, so it needs to be um, we need to replace the floors. The cabinets need to be replaced. Um, so that's the capital project, the renovation. Yeah. yeah. And the other unit is ready to rent. They're ready, right. So what we're in the process of is a um, system called Champ, which is the centralized wait list in Massachusetts and we pull a name from we pull a list from there and we go through the process of vetting people off of the champ wait list and that takes time so there's no priority for local area there people? is a priority for local and veteran and then there's an emergency status okay. so emergency is no fault no fault of your own um, and we can talk about that I can yeah, give you I read, a, I read yeah. about that. Yeah. Bit. So are we pretty good with the 30-day turnaround or whatever the no. THCD talks about? No. That's unrealistic? Yeah, that's unrealistic with our new CHAMP system that they have in play. Yeah. Um, and we also, when you have a turnover that needs so much work, we do a waiver. Uh -huh. So um, THCD offered, we apply for a waiver, which we have to keep up with. So we keep DHCD um, up to date on the progress. So we're good. Good. So. All right. Thank you. Good to hear. Mm -hmm. What about the ones over in Golden Court here? Are they ready to go? We have one ready to go and one in the same condition. We wanted to do some um, 
replacements of the floor and oh. um, cabinet yes. cabinet need to be replaced there. So. Please. And what I wanted to say, what, what I learned at the uh, Mass Narrow conference was that this issue of champs is a problem for housing authority, you know, 248 housing authorities in the state. And the state is aware of it. DHCD is working on a way to mitigate, you know, now it being online application processes and the problems that that has caused. In a word, 248 housing authorities at the top uh, so, so say you're applying as a tenant and you want to be only in certain housing authorities, fine. So you click the ones that you want to be in, but the overwhelming majority of people who are applying hit all. And that adds people to every wait list in the state and it causes a backup and a slog in the whole system. Right. So they are, they are making updates. So the most current update we have is by county. So when you go in to apply, you you can still press like all, but now you can see where, what county you want to apply in. So that's nice. So that's limiting people. But we still have that backlog of people who, who did press all mm -hmm. and applied to every single housing authority in Massachusetts. And an example is Franklin. So you have the town of Franklin and you have Franklin Housing Authority. So the best example is, is that Franklin Housing Authority worked this tenant, vetted them, got all the way through to the quarry, got all their information and said, okay, you know, would you like to come see the apartment? Here's the address. And they were like, what? <laughs> yeah, we don't want to go there. And they were thinking it was in Franklin, Mass. So it, it's very difficult. Hadley is nice and there, we have a, a wait list that's very long in Hadley. And we have a lot of people that want to live here. So we're very fortunate with our turnovers. Um, well, do you know why it is that Hadley is, why people want to live here? It's, it's a beautiful housing authority. It's one of the most beautiful housing authorities in Massachusetts, in my opinion. Um, it's on a bus route. Um, and it's just in a, in a wonderful town, so. That, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah. I have another question. Risa brought up, um, uh, she made a comment a couple of meetings ago about the kitchens not being up to date, meaning mm -hmm. that there's no place for the common de kitchen device, microwave. Is that on your list of things to get done? That would be um, something we can look to in the future. That's what I mean. Right. It is a, a capital. It, you guys <clears throat> will be presented with capital improvements through the years. That is one of the projects that we could add, but it is not on one now. Right oh. now, we're doing the windows. I just didn't so. want it to get overlooked. Oh, yeah. It will never get overlooked. Okay. Never. So we'll, we may be able to deal with that. At oh, absolutely. Next, uh, capital budget. Yeah. Okay. Thank it, you. But right now we got windows and yep. we have doors and we have 705s need work. So it's a progression yeah, I, of what's going on. I, I don't need to override anything that you're doing. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure it didn't get lost. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. Any other questions for Mary? No, sir. All right. Okay. Uh, where are we? Tenants come receivable? Who went through that, Mary? <coughs> Uh, facilities it would be Bruce the TAR yeah the t um, the TAR so that was the accounts receivable if you will looked at it and if you had any questions about it no question Mary well, I have questions <clears throat> I see that the uh, late fees here seem to be going up from prior reports has mm -hmm. something changed with the uh, attaching late fees to tenants uh, rents due or something um, if you don't pay your rent you get a $25 late fee it's in your lease okay yep what's the timeline on that the rents are due on the first of the month when are the late fees attached uh, at the end of the month the end of the month mm -hmm. not the first no. not on the first day no yes yes uh. yeah, if I can correct that 
So late fees go on 30 days after, right? 30 days afterwards. And the reason why you're seeing more of them now is during the pandemic, um, DHCD put us a hold on them. They said you shouldn't, we shouldn't be charging. So we weren't charging late fees during the pandemic, giving people a chance. And now it's just started again in we about a <coughs> We've always we had, they're in days. Can, we can we stop, if we can stop them. Quiet, we'll, you can have a comment later. All right, any, so, anything? Uh, uh, yes, Harry. Yes, Harry. So I understand that you put them on at the end of the month, the late fees. Mm -hmm. The first one. Is there any have. consideration taken to when different tenants receive their Social Security or their pension benefits yes, or whatever? Yes, we do. So Social Security comes at different times. Absolutely. Third of the month, seventh of the month, absolutely. third Wednesday of the month. Whatever. So Carrie can testify to that. So there are some tenants who pay. We always say you have the first of the month, but people get their check on the fifth. So they have the first five working days to pay their rent. And then there are people who get their check on the third, the third Wednesday of the month. So we know those tenants will pay on the third Wednesday of the month. Do we, don't check? we don't apply that late fee. I just, tomorrow on the first of the month, I'll roll the rents over for February. And when I do that, anyone who owes money come February 1st, I apply that $25 late fee onto it. On February 1st? On February 1st. So anything. if the rent is due February 1st, they get a late fee on February 1st? No, they get a late fee on anything they owe from January. From January. Right. If they didn't pay January's rent and it's already February 1st, they'll get it. Right. So my question is, in terms of timing, Mm -hmm. If somebody's Social Security check comes in on the 17th of yes. January right. and you were paid the rent for January, there should not be a late fee February 1st for January. No. no. Okay. I just want to understand. Also, we will work with people. So if somebody calls me and says, I, you know, this is going on, we'll go into a payment agreement. So we'll sit down with them. We have a property manager that will sit down with them and they'll sign a payment agreement. They will say, yes, I owe this amount. I agree that I will pay this, you know, like $50 a month to correct my arrears and they won't get a late fee. All right, so here's my confusion. If somebody's check comes in on the 17th of January yes. and their payment to the rent, although it's due January 1st, you get it on January 18th or and 19th they pay from when they pay it. Yeah. So there's no late fee. No. All right. So how are these going up? Are people delinquent by months? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. They are. Yes. Okay. We have people who haven't paid their rent in, in three, three months. <laughs> and what do we do about that? We send them notices to quit and we take them to housing okay. court. All right. And we have several people in housing court right now. Okay. Thank you. That's You're welcome. Very good explanation. I appreciate that. All right. Do we have to approve those, Mr. No, Chairman? That's no, that's information. No, no, no Just information. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to facilities now. The capital update. Again, just uh, facilities again is just going to be information. I'm just going to tell you about. One of the things we've all been waiting for is uh, the Windows project. Seems like it's delayed and delayed and delayed. I have the advertisement to bid. It is going out February 8th. We will go out to bid, and uh, they have till March 1st to get their bids in, and then we will pick, um, you know, the low bidder and approve the contract. We should be able to get these windows working in the spring finally. <coughs> Um, there was a little bit of a holdup, and it seems like it was uh, there was some CPA funds from Hadley that we already had approval, but DACD hadn't applied the approval to the budget. Once I reminded them and sent it again to them, they said, "Okay, well, thank you for providing that." They added the seventy-five thousand dollars CPA funds that is helping to pay for this project, um, and we're good to go. We got the bid out. The, it's already uh, it's already you know approved. That's ready to go on the newspapers it's everywhere. So, so that's great. We're finally gonna, we're finally going to see the the window project going. Um, I, I will say about some of the other projects as well. Um, 
We've had RCAT, which is a regional capital assistance team. So the smaller housing authorities that doesn't normally have a modifications person on staff um, get assigned a regional capital assistance team uh, person that goes around and helps with projects, designing them, getting the scope of work out, pushing the process along. So we actually have a regional capital assistance team person for here. And we were out here last week because he's a new person that has been reassigned. And we went back through the projects that we have in the long term. So we're looking at, if you looked at our capital improvement plan, some of the projects were pushed out like for the fourth and fifth year. We have some ARPA funds come in. And so he's gonna help me get those projects that are pushed out four or five years, get them done this year, you know, potentially this year, between this year and next year. We're gonna start them this year like the chimney project and things like that. So we're, we looked at the chimneys, looked, uh, took pictures, we looked at the hot water heaters. There's some that need to be replaced, they're older. And so we're gonna get those moving as well. And again, this is information, it's not, a, it's not a requiring a vote. When we do get an approved bidder for this project, we will ask for your vote to approve uh, the recommendation that we get from the architect to say, I've checked this, this, this company out, they're good to go and we'll ask for your approval at that time. Um, <clears throat> so the other thing I just wanted to say is that there's been, um, I have some work order reports in here. Um, I, I'm gonna answer a question before it even comes up because the first, uh, it shows open items. I just went into the work order report. We happened to pull it on the 25th <laughs> and there was a clogged toilet on the 25th. It got fixed the same day. It's not still clogged. <laughs> And uh, it was closed out, but it was in between the, the, from when this report was pulled and you know the same day it was closed out. Um, the rest of it is just other things that we've done. They're already closed uh, work orders. If you have any questions about them, I'll answer them. We have redacted any names and unit numbers um, from the report. And so, but if there's questions, you can kind of see that we do a lot of work out here. So, thank you. Mr. Chair. Newbie, newbie question for Bruce. Yeah. So, um, what's about two questions? One is, do we have to do prevailing wage for the uh, window work? And the other question is, what's uh, the longest the tenant has to wait to get your attention or your help or get a job done? Typically, I know it's not a fair question, huh? but we do say once you get a call, it's always every eighty percent is within forty-eight hours, or ninety percent is within twenty-four hours, or. And the prevailing wage in, uh, question is very uh, interesting to me too. Do we have to do sure? Do we sure. Have to do prevailing wage? So, part of the Mass General Laws requires for any kind of procurement. There's procurement laws, Chapter 149 and Chapter 39 in the Mass General Laws. They um, they require the prevailing wage for the projects. So, how so, the authorities are underneath that? Yes, dictation? we are. We are. We are fund. These projects are funded. They're subsidized or are funded by the state. Our capital improvement plan. So we are required to do those for those projects. Yes, um, they are posted at the time. You know when the project is bid as part of the bid documents. So we already have the the prevailing wage. It's already been sent. I have it on file, and it's part of the bid package. So what the prevailing wage is. Second question is, we um, it depends on the um, call. When we get a call, if it's an emergency, it's, it's initiated 24 or 48 hours. An example is we came out to fix a, a, a furnace recently. It needed some parts. We were there <laughs> within 24 hours, but the parts came in a couple days later and you know we got, the, we got it going at that point. So it might, it might not be fixed in an emergency in 48 hours, it was initiated, we did anything we could to remediate. If a space heater was required, we, we provided one. So the tenant like gets at least a phone call within 24 Oh, immediately for emergencies, okay. immediately for emergencies. Now for, that's why I said depends on what the call is. If it's a routine call, we basically, the, 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 the Department of Housing has some recommendations on periods of time for the work orders. Um, and so it's actually 14 days for a requested work order is what they give us but we don't wait 14 days we typically get to uh, the work orders here in hadley the following thursday so if we got it on wednesday we'll probably be there thursday but that's the way we we've worked it to be there on and focus on those requested work and that's working pretty well for you it seems to be working pretty well okay. and and you know honestly if there's something that comes up and we're able to get to it 
Um, we are focusing on getting units turned over. We have maintenance folks in the in the empty units right now, um, and so we focus on that. But if we uh, if we are able to get to something sooner, um, then we we absolutely do that. Thank you. I'm sorry to go on so long, but um, so having been on the select board a couple of terms, capital projects always went over budget, and it was always blamed on material supply, or well that bid is six months old, everything's changed, and costs uh, would multiply. You think you're under control on the window pressure? So, um, you know, that it's, a, it's very true that the, the costs go up. You know, um, cost of all materials have gone up uh, from the original estimates. And in this case, we had right near the end of the finalization of this project, we had an inspection done for um, asbestos. And we didn't expect it, but there is asbestos. So that's adding to the cost of the project because now that has to be remediated. So new procedures had to be put into the documents that would deal with the um, okay. asbestos that's in the sealant. And so now, now that's, gonna, that's gone up yeah, some. Yeah, the question was just, do you think our budget is so going to be enough? I think we're good because what we did is we, um, we got the CPA funds as well. So not we, we, we are good. We we have we have enough funds in there to cover any contingencies right. that's already been planned for. Thank you, Bruce. I, I know the CPA doesn't like people coming back for the same thing, and uh, I don't want to have to go to. That no, we're we're here. we're good. We have we have we have funds available. Our, we we have um, um, CFA, which is a financial accounting, uh, you know, uh, budget that they give us for formula funding. Yeah. Formula funding is what the state gives us for funding yeah. these projects. We, we have plenty of funds over there Thank to you. do this project. That's why we don't jump to do something else. That's why things like, you know, the chimney or the parking lot repaving, those are year three and year four in our plan. And yeah. as, if you looked at our capital improvement plan, they're pushed out a few years. Okay. And that's so we have funds to do the project we're working on right now. Good to hear. You're on record now. We have enough money. All right. I hope they're good windows. I hope the tenants are getting really good windows. All right, thank you, Bruce. Thank you. Any Harry? Other questions? I, uh, two questions. One, have we received the $81,972 ARPA funds? Yeah. Well, we, we, so we don't, we don't get, we've, you've approved it and we have it allocated to the Housing Authority, but DHCD still has that money. We don't get the money until we submit the proper documents for the um, the project that that money is earmarked for. Yeah. So if we're doing the windows and we're getting ARPA money, we start the project and then we upload the invoices and then they, they pay the invoices. Through, they send us the money so that we can pay the invoices. But we don't get ownership, we don't get to keep the money in our bank account and get interest on it until there's a, um, yes. until there's a project. And we won't, we never get interest on it because they hold it. <laughs> So the DHCD is still holding this eighty-one thousand. That's correct. Yes. And then we submit invoices to them, and they release the money. Correct. As we so okay. if Carrie sends a fifty thousand dollar invoice in, um, they'll send us fifty thousand dollars, and then she'll be able to pay the bill. And we can see those invoices if we so choose. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions. No, is that there, Harry? That was it. it. That oh, okay. Did we receive the money and uh, how it's spent? So, yeah. All right, we'll Thank move you. on. Uh, do we want to go back to the financials? Are you all set, Pam? So I did. I've reached out to Evelyn Lusay and Gear, um, who is sending an email over to the legal department to get the legal definition of the fiduciary responsibility. I've also reached out to the auditor, Lisa Fallon, and I'm waiting to hear back from her. So I don't have a definitive answer or anything other than what I'm giving you that that is the responsibility of the board to oversee the finances. So at this point, I don't have it. She's hoping to call back within the time frame of the meeting. If she doesn't, okay. we'll just have another audit finding. Well, okay, we'll just move on. We'll wait a few more minutes and we'll move on to the management, management agreement update. And I was hoping to have the management agreements back to you. They are sitting on upper management's desk in um, at DHCD, but what I've been advised by Evelyn Musea is that the Department of Housing will be retroactively signing the management agreements back to the date they were signed. So they do consider them valid. 
um, but they are there's other processes that do go through um, such as checking the staffing plan and things of that nature so they're just waiting for a signature and I really hope we have them for the next meeting um, and then to that end too they're also advising and reminding you like I reminded that there is a 60-day clause on either party to get out of the management agreement um, in in the board uh, Mary passed out just before I have a thick packet that we gave you on the process that you would have to follow to hire your own executive director so that you have all of that information as well okay. any more questions on it I'm going to comment on this management agreement for the last time I hope I hope it's the last time since May we have been inquiring about this management agreement and the story seems to keep changing no. that now we have or we're going to get a retroactively signed document that has a three-year contract etc um, prior to that though there was no mention back in May or June or July when we were all asking for this contract about encumbered extracted signatures which I have no idea what that means there's been no confirmation that whatever was sent to the DHCD by snail mail got lost no, there was no follow-up uh, in the rest of 2020 2021 even into 2022 when we get on the board we're asking for this and and then in our November 22nd meeting I asked was this voted at a prior board meeting? Mm -hmm. You told me yes. And I asked if it was recorded in the minutes, in the minute books. You told me yes. Mm -hmm. That being a Tuesday, Thursday was Thanksgiving, the weekend. Monday, November 27th or 8th, whatever that Monday was, about 10.30, quarter of 11, I stopped in here because I wanted to look at the minute books. They were nowhere to be found. I was told that I had to ask Pam Creek or Pam Rogers or whatever. So yesterday I picked up my packet. I noticed the minute books still are not on the shelves where they used to be. Somewhere along the line somebody told me they were locked up. I don't know why. They're public records. There are minutes. Mm -hmm. I should have access to look at them. Where are the minute books, please? So, no, uh, no I'm going to actually take this. So you don't want Mary to answer that question. No, I'm not going to let Mary answer. I'm going to answer the oh, question okay. because I'm in charge of all of the intellectual property of the housing authority by my by my position absolutely i am in charge the very first thing is all the meeting books are in the office and they're in a fire safe they're they, not only are they public record they're they're the legal documents of the housing authority that have to be kept in pe perpetuity so we don't have i mean there's there's minutes back there from 1960 they're not backed up on a on a on a hard drive they're just paper records. They have to be taken care of properly. This is through the Secretary of State. They're there. I'm the one responsible to make sure that the Freedom of Information Officer, that I distribute information. If you would like a copy of that meeting, all you have to do is ask me for it and I'll get it. You can send that, you can give that to the person in the, he hasn't asked me. And I, no one is passing that information that you were specifically looking for that. And it is also my understanding that you came in at another time and went through the meeting, the, the ledger, excuse me, the me meeting minutes. So you have had a chance to look through it. I'm not sure why you've come back if it wasn't, if, if you weren't able to find it or what it was. But, and then going back to the management agreement, the management agreement has been given to the board on four separate occasions. It's also been given to you in the binder. It did not come you did not articulate that it was the signature that was causing you the pause until much later at which point i explained the encumbered process of it there is no shenanigans there is no there is nothing going on there's nothing deceitful going on nefarious which is what you're implying i never implied that it, Let's it's be clear actually about that. it's I've actually never implied in, a, that. in a conversation with the department of housing with myself and richard they came right out and said that, that they felt that, that there was the implication that something nefarious has gone on. Who said that? 
Courtney Curran from the Department of Housing. From who? From me? No, from, from, the, from, board, me. from the board. From the board itself. Who because on the board? The, she didn't say specifically who on the board. She said from the board that this question, it, and this question has overtaken what has happened. I have explained this. I have not changed the story, which you just said. So if that's not an implication that there is something untruthful or nefarious going on, I don't know. Back in May, there was no mention of encumbered extracted because signature because, because I didn't it, ask specifically about no, that. No, because I didn't realize that you were saying because to me it was a okay. it's a valid contract. Right. It is so a valid contract. So the minute books have been on the shelf all year long. They have and not I been on the book the shelf all year. They've been there when Mary Billion was there. They were up there. And I come in just to look at them, and now they've been locked up in a fireproof safe. That's fine. It just so seems you're to me to be a little odd. No, I don't know. no, it's, it, there's nothing. It was know. one meeting book that I believe she was working on, and then she put it no, in no. the. If you would listen to the answers, it I am listening. Help. You're not. Yes, you're I not am. listening. It's joined its home with the other sixty years of articles, of minutes that are in the safe. <clears throat> Why is that strange? They should never have been kept there. there. The they answer. should never have been on that open shelf. That's the never in a million years. They should never have been on that shelf. I make the mistake of leaving them there. I should never have okay. left them. What do I need to do to have access to them? And I'm I not can, just talking I, about one meeting. I would like the minute book and I would like to look at something. That's the past before. Doesn't matter what I, can, I want to look at. I can I'm a board commissioner. I have that ability and that right to. Look I can. At them. You can tell me you want to look at them, and I'll go get the book, and you can look at them. Thank you. you they cannot leave the building, though. I can make photocopies for you. I will sit I can, here. No, no. I'm just That's clarifying. Fine. Yep. I can make photocopies of anything that you want. Okay. <clears throat> Reese, I think All right. Let's move on. Mr. Chairman, yes. Just, just to clarify, um, I've been on the board since I was elected in May, and one of the things I wanted to look at routinely was the agreement, management agreement, between the uh, Hadley Housing Authority and the Amherst Housing Authority. Just as a part of my becoming familiar with the Hadley Housing Authority and re its relationship with the Amherst Housing Authority. For eight months, I've been told that I have those uh, agreements. <clears throat> and we still, you heard today, do not have signed agreements. So I just want to clarify that. If there's any frustration on our part, it's that eight months is a long time to get, and we still haven't gotten it. The normal thing would be for a new commissioner like me to ask for something like that and somebody in the office to <clears throat> routinely and happily say, here, here it is. And we still haven't gotten it. So I just wanted to make that for the record. Thank you. So, Mr. Chairman, may I speak? So again, for clarification purpose, you have been given the management agreement from day one. It is in your board binder. You still have it in your board binder. The only thing that is missing on that agreement is the signatures of Richard Whitkus and the signature of Michael Burkhardt. Otherwise, that, that is the agreement, all, of, all three pages of it, along with the certified board extract of both the Amherst meeting and the Hadley meeting. There's no, you know what the agreement says. You absolutely know what the, there are no signatures. We can't produce signatures of Richard and Michael. We can't. But DHCD is going to put their signature on. Okay. And just so everybody in this room understands, the documents that we were given were totally unsigned, even by the DHCD. That's what we're saying. And right above where, at the end of the document, it says this or I'm paraphrasing, this document is not effective until endorsed or signed or approved by the DHCD. That's all we've been asking for for eight or nine months, and we still don't have it. And the explanation to that, too, is that at this point, they were, again, they were encumbered by both boards. Both boards have been, went into this willingly, and both boards have been working together for the past three years on this. So. All right. 
We're going to move on, I guess. All right. The election of Board of Commissioners Officers. Uh, as of right now, I feel that I serve my term as chair and I would like somebody else to step up and be chair. Well, I appreciate Any your service. Any more discussion? I appreciate your service. Yeah. Yeah. Any nominations for anybody? Well, I think as my friend of 32 years, and you persuaded me in some respect to join this board, I want to thank you for your efforts on this board, and I appreciate that you asked me to join because uh, I think that it needed some, some financial uh, oversight here. So, yeah. So, are you looking for a motion for a new Mo chairman? For a new chair. Anybody, any nomination for a new chair? I would nominate John Allen as the succeeding chair to you. I'll uh, second that. Discussion. Can I have a comment? Is Any comment? Comment period now. Reese? Discussion? My comment is that uh, thank goodness for detailed minutes so that we can see the comments made by various Board of Commissioners. And my strong sense of it is that John, although you might be a lovely man, that you do not have the capacity to, to chair this board. And I say that because I've sat here month after month and listened to you ask the same question. You ask, it is answered in complete detail yet you ask the same question over and over again it's been asked and answered a multitude of, of times if if there's that much difficulty for you to understand an answer for you to understand the board training about uh, approving warrant reports and approving financial statements I, I do not see you as a viable chair, and I wish for Rich to continue. Strongly wish Rich to continue. I make comment, Mr. I chair. Will, I will decline, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Mr. Chair. But I, I do, I recommend that we be chair. Thank you. May I make a comment? Yes. So I'm sorry that we just met for the first time today. When I think of someone with your professional background. I think of a building, and I think of um, all the systems in the basement, and I think somebody on the third floor is having some little problem, and you have to figure out how that problem way over there is caused by some interruption with the flow of things that may originate way down here or at some other place over there. So I think there's no, every plumber is a systems guy and coming in brand new to this system, I was interested to see if your professional background would would lead you to identify the little problem, little problem over here, and little problem over here, little problem over here, and, and bring the system to work more smoothly. And maybe it's just something that can't be done. I don't know. I've worked with John um, for years. I know he's been a selectman. I know he's uh, been in the corporate world. Um, I know he's pretty good with numbers, good with, good with numbers. We, we both chaired a committee for the town uh, not too long ago. Um, I think John's perfectly com uh, competent. And uh, Risa, what you've experienced here, I don't think is necessarily the rule or indicative of how John would lead or, or, met, or be, a, be a chair. I'm gonna say one last thing. Sorry I talked so much. I see friction between John and Pamela Rogers. And it's exciting to me to think of two of them being kind of forced to start sitting down at the table on more or less a weekly basis, at least I hope, and working together. And I think the loud, you know, sometimes elevated voices and a little bit of friction we're seeing at the recent meetings or that I've seen at the recent meetings 
um, is going to go away quickly because I think John is very reasonable. I'm, you know, Pamela's been in all kinds of corporate positions, difficult corporate positions. I'm, I have no question that if two intelligent people sh sharing the same problems can sit down at a table and debate and discuss and end up with solutions that are going to make everything here more copacetic. I'm glad there's been friction, yeah. and I'd like to see these two people being I, forced isn't the right word, but um, I'll use the word forced. Have In the a, opportunity. Have the opportunity, thank you, John, <laughs> to start sitting down regularly and John, stop repeating the same questions, you know, if, if that's what he's been doing, yeah. and get the question from the horse's mouth, forgive the expression, Pamela. I sat down with Pamela for two hours, you know, for the first time a few days ago. She's a reasonable person. She's very bright. I have no question that they can't come to a lot of, they're going to disagree probably half the time. But uh, we as board members are going to hear both sides of an argument and hopefully a, um, a compromise solution to whatever the issue of the day is. So if that falls apart quickly and we find that they cannot work together, then Risa, we can re certainly reconsider who we want as our chair. But I think John would be excellent. I've worked with him for years. I have a lot of respect for John. Okay. okay. Can I just make a comment? Yes, actually, please. It's a question for Mr. Allen. So, Mr. Allen, you have a one-year term. Are you seeking re-election? It, it, your term ends. I don't think that's material to the motion that's on the table. It's just a question. Yeah, I, I haven't decided whether to run or not. When does your term end, Mr. Allen? In May. So, for a few months, you're talking about being the chair and you haven't decided whether or not to run. I, I I'm going to say that I think that's inappropriate for you to be not, if you haven't even been able to decide to make the commitment <clears throat> to run for election as a commissioner at this juncture, I am concerned that you are actively, clearly uh, wanting to be the chair of a board that you might not even be on come May. Thank you. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll move on then. On, we excuse, gotta, excuse me. Excuse me. We have a motion. Yeah, I, I made Mo a motion to, to uh, oh. elect John as the chairman. You and it was seconded, and it we was need second? to act on that motion. Yeah. All right, but there was a situation, if he's not going to run again, why vote him in as chair? That's right. Then you can, you can vote my motion down, but my motion is on the table to take an action. Yeah. Am I able to make a counter motion of some sort? Not until you it's can, a, you can um, you can attempt you can ask to amend, but then they would have to you'd have to get a second for that as well. I ask for an amendment to Harry's or whoever's motion it was that we table this discussion about changing the chair until we find out whether or not Mr. Allen decides to even uh, until he is reelected if he is for another five year term. So Risa, John could get hit by a truck tomorrow. You know, whoever's chair might be gone the next day. We never know how long a chair will be in place. We can also, as a board, get fed up with John's behavior as chair and, and make a motion to change the chair then and there. So whether or not John runs again is really his business. If we want to try him out for a few months to see here whether we can create a good working team here with Pamela and John, I'd be very excited about that. And um, if John goes away in May or is hit by a truck in, in February, sorry, uh, uh, we'll have to come up with a new chair anyway. So we have, a mo the, we have Harry's motion in my second. Vote no if you don't want John to be chair. All right, we'll, we'll have a vote then. All in favor of John being chair? Aye. No, you can vote. Oh, uh, I'll do it. And then opposed. If it's not unanimous, you want to ask it. Um, can how many vote? Mr. Chairman, I'll do it. Yeah. So a roll call vote. Thank Correct? You. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I'll oppose. Harry. I vote yes. Dave. Dave Moskin votes yes. Uh, John votes yes. Rich Whitgus, no. Risa Smith Freed? 
No. So, Three. Um, Mr. Chairman, too, I really do think we should have the vice chair, and we most certainly need a treasurer. We do need a treasurer voted in. Right. It's in the bylaws, yeah. All right. So, mm -hmm. as of uh, all right, I'd as like of to right now. <coughs> Sorry, Mr. Chair. I'd like to nominate Harry to return to the chair position. That's my motion. Very, Harry was treasurer, or was he said he stepped down? So I'd like to invite him, make a to, motion that he vice chair may be uh, treasurer again. Is there a right. second? It, it's not vice chair. It's treasurer. I think. Treasurer. No. Sorry, this oh. is treasurer. Well, we're going on vice chair now. Oh, I beg your pardon. Vice chair. Okay, sorry. Make a motion for a vice. Anybody for a vice chair? I'll only say we haven't had a vice chair for as long as I've been on the board. I think that needs to be really thought about. Uh, I'm not prepared to act on a vice chair today. Should we table it? So I No, because we need a vice chair in case John gets hit by a truck. Okay, you don't need to again. talk to me like that, again. number one. Number two, all I did was ask a question by saying we haven't had a vice chair for as long as I've been on the board. I don't see the urgency to have a vice chair, but that's all I said. If we, you're going to ask for a vice chair, we'll vote a vice chair. Uh, I, I'm not taking an action. I, I am not going to get into you about your interpretation of what I said when no. David said, no, well, if John gets hit by a truck, I'm saying, yes, if John gets hit by a truck, we need a vice chair. Now, according to the minutes, if you look back in September or even October, we talked about a vice chair. And we, we talked about how we were going to do it the next meeting, and it never got done. Okay, fair we enough. We all voted yes back then that we needed a vice chair. Okay. So I'm saying we need a vice chair because the minutes reflected that it was a quorum that we have a vice chair. We just never did it. Now we need to act on our vote. Fine. All right. You said would you nominate someone? I don't know who to nominate. I'll make a nomination for Reese to be vice chair. No, you don't, actually. It's my public comments, please. So you made a motion? I made a motion for Reese. Okay. Is there a second? David seconded it. David seconded it. Hmm? David seconded it. No, I haven't well, seconded have second yet. I no, don't want to table didn't. it, but uh... <clears throat> just to the next meeting. Hmm? Just to the next meeting. You want to table the next meeting? We should... No, because we need a vice chair. We are now, what, September, let's see, October, November, December, January. We're at January 31st. We put it off for four months. Now you've got your win. John Allen's going to be chair. Take the L. Didn't realize it was a competition. Oh. What I'm saying that. is, Thank we need a vice opinion. chair. Mr. Does chair. anyone want to? Thank you for that. Mr. Opinion. Chair, so if I can just clarify, I'm sure the, the board does know, but the position of the vice chair. Excuse me, John. The, just for clarification, I'm sure the board knows, but the position of the vice chair is the, the duties is just to, to run an actual meeting in the absence mm -hmm. of the chairperson. Chair. That's, that's the only. That's, that's it. That's the only thing. Okay. Well, in I the think, absence of the chair. Since I'm a, beginning to be afraid of getting run over by a bus, <laughs> I'm beginning to think I should withdraw. But I don't know. No, John. No. <laughs> I don't want to get killed that way. You're not you? going to get killed. <laughs> So, Vice Chair, are we table or are you going to have a second Second on a Vice Chair? I've made the Reese the Vice Chair. Second? No second. Reese, I yes, believe you can second for yourself. Oh, I second myself, but I already know how the vote's oh, going to come out. Okay, so now just call, any other further, further any discussion? Any other further discussion? All right, roll call. No, no discussion, roll call vote. Harry? No. Dave? No, I table. I, I vote to table. Table. John? No. Yes. I, 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 would, I would second a motion to table it if you want, though. And then just, so we can still have a four to, so and two no's and table and two yeses. So and and then could we get a treasurer? 
Huh? A treasurer. Yeah, you need a treasurer now. Any uh anybody want to be treasurer? Nomination for a treasurer. Well, I would nominate uh, Mr. Chairman. Chairman. I would second that. Motion made to for Harry to be a treasurer. I, I decline that nomination at this time because we still haven't resolved the prior treasurer for nine months and bills have been paid, things have been going on, so I don't see the urgency for a treasurer right now, nor do I want my name on anything at this point in time. Okay. I don't have a comfortability about any of this. So I think right now we had a vice chair and a treasurer are tabled. It's required by the bylaws, Mr. Chair. It is required by the bylaws to have a treasurer within 30 days of a resignation. So I decline well, my nomination. That excludes me. I think we still have a treasurer. Is Christine? Christine? No, we. Christine's not on the board. We can't board. use that. We can't because she's not. And, on well, but her name should, should have been taken off. I heard earlier. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. So yeah. Let's do this. Let's do this yes. in February, maybe. I, I would. I agree. That's uh, over the 30 days, sir. Mr. Chairman, I would move that we table the discussion of the treasurer until so the we next resolve month. some of these issues at the next meeting. Next meeting, 30 days. And the vice chair. Is there a second? I'll second that. All so right. let's, let's talk about both those positions next. We will table the, both the vice chair and treasurer till next meeting. Okay. Right. But I'd like to ask that the chair put those put that on the agenda for February. Thank you. And Mr. Chair, please put on the well, whoever's doing the minutes, put it on the minutes that we are in violation of the bylaws. And, it's an audit and it is an audit finding to not have a treasurer over 30 days. You keep looking at me. I don't, I'm not, I've I'm not looking at you. I'm you're, at, you're looking right over here. What are you talking about? I'm, I'm not looking okay, at you. Okay, all right, calm down. Well, come on, calm down. All right, all right. Commissioner discussion. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Is this the appropriate, any more discussion? Is, is this the appropriate place to discuss the, the board's response to the claim brought against the board for an open meeting law violation? You said this is where we would discuss that. We need to have our board response to attach to the claim against the open meeting law violation, and we need to forward that on to the AG's office. Now, is that correct, uh, Reese? Because you brought the claim, we need to solve that problem and finish that act of business. Mayor? Yes. Uh, the Board of Commissioners of Hadley Housing Authority failed to come up with a response. Uh, when we had our meeting on January 10th, there was no further meetings regarding the open meeting law complaint. Uh, you have lost your capacity as a public body to respond to that complaint because it's been more than 14 business days. And so the uh, directions, uh, instructions from the Attorney General's office are clear. Those were all read to you. You had a copy. And the Board of Commissioners failed to come up with a response. And so what will happen after that is according to the uh, Attorney General's office. And that's it. Um, the minutes that I read, Mr. Chairman, um, indicate that uh, the complaint was sent by the complainant to the Attorney General's office. Is that correct? The instructions from the Attorney General's office were followed to the letter by the complainant. And the question is, did the complainant forward the complaint to the Attorney General's office? The yes. complainant? Yes or no? Well, Sir, I am not required to answer your question in the format and restricted by the answers you have allowed. That's inappropriate behavior on the part of a commissioner. Now, I will say again, the Attorney General's instructions for filing an open meeting law complaint were followed to the letter. Those instructions were also read out to this public body twice, and you had a copy. They've been followed to the letter. You can get your answer from that. Uh, uh, let me ask you this way. Are the minutes correct? Well, since we've tabled the minutes and failed to approve them, it doesn't matter what the minutes say, okay. does it? All right. Then um, 
I, I believe that the board might consider responding, even if late, to the Attorney General's office with a copy of the complaint. I believe that's the proper procedure. You failed to reply as a public body within 14 business days, and you failed to ask for an extension with good cause. Yes, and you can take that up with the Attorney General's office. It won't be me taking it up with the Attorney General's office. It will be the Attorney General's office taking it up with this public body. Okay, fair enough. Any more discussion on this? Okay. What's what's the motion? There is no motion. Uh, isn't there a motion to forward the response to the Attorney General's office? So, but, no. No, I don't, there, I don't think there's a standing motion, but we can't vote on anything because yes, it wasn't not on, to the it's Attorney not General's on the agenda. Because item. the no. public never votes to accept the right. response. That's what happened. All right, so there was no uh, response on that? I don't believe Pamela so got that. So oh, just for a, uh, for public comment. Mr. Huh? Chairman. I need to be next for public comment. Yeah, okay. Mr. Chairman, just for point of information, the next correspondence that this board will receive will po possibly be from the Attorney General on our failing to send a board response to the open meeting law violation complaint. So we will await for information from the Attorney General's office, then we will have to act on that. Is that the proper thing? Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, Mr. Chairman? Yes. I, I believe that it's our duty to respond to the complaint, which I did at the board's request via email to Teresa, the complainant, and every board member. The only thing that is missing is the conveyance of that response to the Attorney General's office. And that's our responsibility, I believe. And I'm just asking for a vote to, to go ahead and do that. If, in fact, it, it will, they may come back and say, your response was late, fine, we'll deal with it if they do. But they will have nothing to do unless we respond to the complaint. Mr. Chairman, you don't need a vote with, with all due respect, we cannot vote on this because it is not on the agenda. It wasn't posted no. with the agenda. That's open meeting law. You have to post your agenda with enough specificity of what is going to be discussed so that in, in order to vote on it. And it's not on the agenda. It's not an agenda item. I think just a little later. All right, we're moving on. Public comments. No, Reese, sorry. Reese. Yeah. Can I just have, can you just read the thing about the public comments first? That might yes, help. That might help. Just put a little disclaimer there. No. Where is this? Is it on the agenda? It must be in the in package. Yeah, it is. Oh, you want me to read this? Yes. During the, right yeah, here? Yeah, I would read that right now. Oh, okay. Here. Under public comments, during the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address. The chair may need to curtail discussions in the interest of time as needed. All right. Do I have All right. Read to you. Um, I am speaking now. <coughs> I am speaking now as a tenant, and by. Uh, so I'm speaking during the public comment period. So I undertook taking a poll of tenants of Golden Court and Burke Way. I polled uh, I polled 32 tenants. Uh, the other 15 did either not answer their door, were at work, for instance, they were at work or, or kids. I went to every door two or three times except for two people. Um, but there were, there were 15 people that were non-responders. The first, the 32, however, 30 voted they would like this management agreement with Amherst Housing to continue. There were two people 
Uh, one person voted or said no, they don't want it to continue. And the other person who I did not include in the 30 positives were, uh, was someone who is not, says not allowed to sign legal documents, but indicated, in fact, I wrote down the quote, I think. Um, I want things to stay the same as now, but I do not sign legal docs. So I didn't include that in the tabulation. So what I'm saying is there's of the people polled, 32 people polled out of 47 people occupying. And of the people polled, 97, or I'm sorry, 93.75% want the management agreement with Hadley Housing, uh, between Hadley and um, Amherst to continue. Some of the comments I got were, <coughs> Amherst Housing Authority has been wonderful. Another uh, person said, I don't want it to be like it was before because there wasn't enough staff and I couldn't get things done. Now, 15 people were not polled, again, and I explained why. But if you do the, the statistical stuff on it, and Carrie's really good with numbers, maybe she can, 93.75% positive of 30 out of 32 is an excellent finding. 15 people I couldn't get a hold of or declined to, there were two I declined to ask. There's no way that 15 could tilt the balance to less than a majority. So I'm going to ask the board to take that into consideration in your deliberations about whether or not to void the contract with your 60 day out, whether or not to renew the contract in July. But I'm going to point out that before Mary came, we were, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mary, our reserves were <coughs> less than 20% or so? No, before Mary got No, no, before Mary was... Before Mary came, it was when Darlene was here. Okay, when you left... They were about 34. Okay, and now our reserves are what? 70, 77%. In just three, well, yeah, three and a half years. The first one year contract and the second were two and a half years into the second contract, which is a three year contract. We've gone from 77. 77% reserves. We have, we have um, it's 63 point something percent overall, 32 out of uh, 47 tenants, because I counted three empty units over here, but um, uh, we have, uh, the breakdown is 63.8% which is almost a strong two thirds say they want and they want Amherst to continue. The other third were either were unpolled and, and statistically they probably have a similar uh, vote. So that's my report. Yeah. Thank you. Reese. Question. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Public comment. Uh, who is the individual or individuals uh, that certified those numbers to the accuracy of the reserves, the percentages, all that stuff you were just giving us? Who, who certified all that, those uh, statistical numbers, and uh, who's responsible for compiling them? The, that would, those statistical, uh, Mr. Chair. Can go ahead. The statistical numbers are certified by Gary DePace and they're in your board binder. I provided those back to you in, in June, those okay. reserves. Second so that's point. Not the late, that's not the latest. Second reserve. point, I didn't realize that a campaign was underway 
so early in the uh, or the rest of the contract here mm -hmm. that a campaign was undertaken to support Amherst Housing Authority. When did this come about? I'm just curious. A campaign? Yeah, you're mm -hmm. going around talking to all the tenants. As a I'm a tenant. I can talk to tenants. Yeah, it's but legal. it seems like it's a campaign <coughs> because you're di giving us numbers of of how everybody feels about Amherst House. I'm just curious. How I'm just giving out. you numbers because I can add and subtract and do percentages. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Okay. You bet. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Were the tenants asked to sign up? <coughs> yes. They were asked to sign up. Yes, so I could keep a record. Uh, okay. Excuse me. Okay, so the tenants were asked to sign and they were pulled by a person they knew to be a number one tenant and number two a commissioner? No, not everybody knows I'm a commissioner. And I did not do this as a commissioner. I do. I am not doing this poll as a commissioner. I did this poll as a tenant. Okay. As a tenant, uh, telling people the, the contract with Amherst Housing comes due in July. So it would be nice to let the Board of Commissioners know well in advance what the tenants want. And the tenants want overwhelmingly, what did I say, 63.83% want Amherst Housing to continue. Of the people who responded to the poll, 93.75% want Amherst Housing to continue. One person said no, they don't want Amherst Housing to continue. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Reese. Any other public comment? Stated here over the 20 years that the worst thing we ever did was join up with Amherst. Now, I thought the board was pretty bad in the old days when Richie was still on it. I thought they were pretty good, bad. Oh my god, but I didn't know what I had coming. You guys, all right, thank you, Maureen. No, no, wait a minute, I'm not through. Oh. <laughs> well, name off of that, first of all. And the worst thing we ever did was join up with Amherst. So, why should we go through that again? We don't, why do you want us to drive, go with Amherst so badly? I mean, I see it as nothing but a mistake. And I see you shaking, I see you shaking your head, Mary, Billy Snell. Yes. But that's the truth. Why is it a mistake, ma'am? Those are true, honest words. We can't ask um, questions. There are a lot of them here. They don't even know what they were signing. The ones that are not here don't know anything, pretty much. They don't know what they were signing, no matter what she says. No matter. I guarantee you that. I know the tenants that are in here, except for a few down front that have only been here in the past couple of years. All right. Thank you, Maureen. Otherwise, I know them all, and all right. I cannot believe that they signed that in the first place. And yes. I cannot believe. Hi, Sue Oppenheimer, Golden Court. Number one, Reese walked around for days with this paper. She didn't come to every door. She no. acted alone. Excuse me. And, and she's Excuse a member me. of the board. Can we just so, stop her? No, 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 not just stop her. I am actually. Oh. Would you please not talk? They cannot talk. Wait, wait, wait. Another resident cannot talk about another resident. She does. She didn't. She didn't mention another resident. All right. We cannot talk about Anyway, this resident. woman over here, I'm not mentioning names, walked around for days, door to door, acting alone, not telling her fellow board members that she was doing this. It was not discussed. It was not voted on. But some of the things that were told to these people when I talked to them were, if you don't vote for, if you don't vote for this, you're going to lose your services. If you don't vote for this, Mary Billion is going to be out of a job. It, and I think these are the, some of the things that were told to people. Most of the people did not even know who Pam Rogers is, let alone Amherst Housing, but they signed the paper. So when you're talking about percentages and numbers and figures, 
why did you miss my apartment? Why did you miss her apartment? Why did you miss so many of our apartments? Because you knew we wouldn't sign. You only went when you knew you could manipulate people into signing. Please direct in your comments at a board commission. Yes. Not appropriate. And number two, I would like the people who are sitting here in this in this room to know that you know when you talk about open meeting law violations, I want you to know that it's so unusual for a board member to come after her own board members. <coughs> never in all of yes, my yes, 70 yes. years have yes. I ever seen it. I've never seen it. Oh, that you, is true. You 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 get together and you discuss, but a, but a, but a new board member attacking oh, her own really? board members and turning them over to the attorney general's office. I've never seen anything like it. So don't talk about behaviors here and how happy people yeah, are. Time. Okay. And I think that we need to talk louder at our meetings. I need, when you talk about open meeting laws, explain to people if you're talking what it is. Explain what the management agreement is. Because a lot of people <coughs> sitting in the office have no idea what you're saying. If you say a management agreement between Amherst Housing and Happy Housing, that you've been looking at for a long period of time without signatures. I mean, it's it, nobody even knows what a management agreement is. So if you could maybe be spend one extra minute and explain to people in the audience what a management agreement is and maybe what an open meeting law violation is, even if it's not a violation. So the people who are actually sitting in the meeting will understand what you're saying. So I think that this poll should be thrown out. It's bogus and it's an insult to the people who have lived here for a long time. All right. Thank you. Any other public comment? Yes. Okay. Um, I've been to several board meetings. Your name, please. That's Helen. I've been to several board meetings. That's Helen. That's Helen. I've been to several board meetings. That's Helen. Pamela Rogers, our executive right. director. I would like to know about the Wi-Fi here. No, I, I, you can you can call me. I can talk to you about it. Oh, Just no, you can ask her now. No, she cannot ask me now in public comments. You she can ask me anything she wants in public and, comments. And I'm advising to call the office, and I'll be happy to talk okay. to you. About and it. what about the um, the TV? About the TV actually works, but call the office and we'll. No, we'll, she, find well it only has one channel. It doesn't. That's not true. Oh, it's not true. true. It, it has not true. one channel. It doesn't <laughs> because I tried. I've been coming here for seven years, and I uh, know that uh, there was a, whatever a twenty thousand dollars left over in a budget, and I was just thinking that the community could really be enhanced. I live over at Green Leaves, and I just I'm trying to speak to you. Is that okay? You can call me in the office. It's not appropriate at a board meeting. It's okay. Okay. That's not what it's appropriate. This is the business of for the board. Okay. That now, we have another thing about the $65 lockout fee. Mm -hmm. You when can address that to the board. Okay. On the $65 lockout mm fee. -hmm. But she doesn't get an answer. Though, that's you. We can't on the $65 lockout fee, is that was that state appropriated the board? To the board is that state appropriated? We never had one. We never had one here. So that's can I answer that? Is, no, we can't. Can we, can call we will. We will check into that. And then, and then also the uh, late fee on the rent. You can check into that yes. too. Yes. Actually, I'll, 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 I will comment on that one. That is Massachusetts state law. That is in the lease that the housing authority uses. The housing authority uses the DHCD lease. You came to the office. I showed you a copy of your lease. Well, we we have, why did you enact it two months ago? When because you it is our, it, it is the job of the housing authority to follow the rules, regulations of the Department of Housing and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and we don't deviate from that. We follow the law. So the three years you ran us, then we didn't get late fees. Why all of a sudden you say that was explained? The yeah, yeah, you want to make them address the chair. Make them address the chair. Nothing. Any other public more any more comment? Yes. I'd like to follow up on a couple of things. Judy Marcali. Um the lockout fee. It's listed as one of the emergency issues that will be taken yeah, care so. of. It's listed. This is one of the <laughs> emergencies. However, in my name and I've already spoken about this. So when you say we'll talk about it later that doesn't happen my neighbor got locked out she doesn't know how to use the phone she doesn't know about getting locked out 
I help her with many, many things, which maintenance won't let me do. Or not maintenance, but management won't let me help that woman, even though I s submitted a letter from her, signed by her as her advocate. When I come down here, I'm told, no, we're not doing that for you. This woman needs help. Yes. She needs help. And I'm willing to give it to her. I don't know why I'm being stopped by management. The $65 lockout fee, when I called on a Saturday when she was locked out, I was told, call the locksmith. <coughs> call the locksmith. Who here has we'll have to check in. A locksmith. We'll have to How check into this. Is this. Thank you for your we'll I have to call the police again. Okay to come and unlock the door so she could get into her apartment and use the bathroom. All right. The we'll $65 lockout fee is outrageous. Thank you for and All right, to thank you. On that, to follow up on that, I think I heard someone say, could you come in and get copies of anything? I think I heard it from Baron. However, when a tenant wants to come in and make copies, low-income tenants we get to get we get charged ten cents a copy. Ten cents a copy. Not true. That's what I was told by your attorney. Well, you were told by your attorney. So, no. And also, what else did I want? Now that I was interrupted, um, the policy. Oh, the twenty-five dollar late fee. I heard Mary say. I do a courtesy call. That is not true. I got a $25 late fee on a mistake in my rent. A mistake because I always pay my rent on time. I have always paid my rent on time. It comes through the bank. I got a $25 late fee. And another one, and another one, and another one, and another one. $250 worth of late fees. I was never notified. I was told two years afterwards that there was a mistake in my rental amount. Courtesy call? Where is the courtesy call? I'll send it. Never got one. Where's the policy that was just described on late fees? Do tenants know about late fees? Does, do people know what's going on here? The ones that do are here. We are here. These things, you send out a newsletter every month. I suggested at a, lab, at a prior meeting that, they, we, that management explain <coughs> to residents about the reasonable accommodation. Tenants don't know. They don't know about the late fee. They don't know about the locking fee. They don't know about reasonable accommodation. And they don't know about grievance policies. It's about time something <coughs> worthwhile went into the newsletter. Right. Right. Thank you for your comment. There's a hand up over there. Yes. now that never happened when I moved in here because of many reasons one when I asked they said because of COVID okay because when I move in here I can move into the office if I want to make a copy then it was another lady Mary is there and one other people if I want to make anything they, I come in here they talk to me she talked to me, she advised me, but recently there is nothing like that. Even to make a uh, copy, they said, no, no, you are not allowed. It's against the law. I came from Boston, and before then, I was, when I came to this country, I was working with the housing something. I know how we help 
people who come in. The office is open to the tenants. Any questions? When their house is spoiled, we send met, uh, maintenance. Myself, until I, sit, I speak to Mary, anybody I talk to, my stove is not working. I will not see anybody to come and help me. I will be, I will be eating outside, which I'm not used to, I'm from Africa. So there are many things that is going on at the time I came in and now. My point is, when, I don't know her name, but she's the tenant representative, to, came into my house to say I should sign something about joining Amas and not joining Amas. So I said, why? He said, if we don't join Amas, we are not going to get staff. I said, if we don't join Amas, we are not going to get staff. He said, yes, we lose Mary. I said, how can we lose Mary? He said, because Mary is already employed <coughs> to the, to the Amas. And the, the only two staff that will be working, one staff for the office, one staff for the maintainer, that is maintainer, 16 hours a week. So I said, oh my God, why is it like that? What of if they have emergency, who is going to replace them? So she said, that is why we should join Amas. So I said, it's okay. I cannot, uh, I don't understand you very well. That is why I did sign it. That there is, a, she told me there is a board meeting today. I'm supposed to have an appointment for my own medical something. I said, no, I have to come here so that the board or who is going to explain to me what is real the benefit of joining Amas and not joining Amas? Because I really want to enjoy my housing here. That anytime I want officer can attend to me. Anytime anything is spoiled in my house, I should have a maintenance. So I want the board to explain or whoever we explain to me what is between joining Amas and not joining Amas. So if they can enlighten me with uh, that and uh, we know right as a tenant if we want to fax anything to go to the office and fax or copy or ask any question sometimes the window is closed they say you cannot talk that is through the window i don't understand this government here in Adlio, i don't talk of other things because from, Mas from uh, Boston, I came here. So the government and everything, the running of everything is different, which I explained to her that everything is different here and it is crippling me. I don't know what to do. If anybody here, the board or the commissioner can explain to me what is really Johnny Amas and not Johnny Amas. If the board feel that Johnny Amas is we favor us, why not join Amas? Abi Amas, I don't know how you call it. Oh, uh, hardly, please. My name is Louis Briggs. I don't really know. I'm, I'm just the different color here, and sometimes when I came here, I was treated differently, which until I raised my voice before I was being treated like somebody. So, right now, I think if you don't fight for your rights, you won't get it. That is what is happening in this place. So, I fight for my rights. Okay, thank you. Any other public comment? No. All right, we'll have to go back to the financials. Anything yet? So I just got an email um, a little bit ago from Lisa Fallon, who is our auditor. Um, and then she said from an AUP, which is agreed upon um, for underwriting for procedure. So that's, that's the one of the audits that we do. Um, so she sees, um, she checks to make sure that the minutes that the board votes to accept the warrant each month. It's a good practice for the minutes to specify the check range in the warrant and the um, dollar amount, the total. So again, in, um, so from the AUP side of things is cash disbursements were authorized in accordance with authorities' policies. So it is a policy of the housing authority that the board approves the minutes, but the the policy has to follow the regulation. So if that's not suffice enough, then I say we just wait until you get the legal, um, the legal 
um, opinion from DHCD. But again, that's okay. So we've got two months without warrants being approved according to policies. But the bills are already paid. They are, but it will be an audit finding. Fine. Worse than a board member not taking training. Okay. How do we stand here now? Are we going to pass the warrant report? Motion? The no motion? I guess they will have to be all tabled. They will, okay. Okay, motion to adjourn. We just set the next meeting, please. Mr. Chairman, before we adjourn, um, I just want to revisit the late fees real quick. Mary, you said that you watch those, handle those, or whatever. And Ms. Roncalli got a late fees happening a lot. Is it, would it be a good idea for the two of you to look at her account and see what's what's going on there with uh, when they get put on there versus when she gets her social security? Is it a social security is, check exactly. issue? Exactly. You know, my, my question Ma was... Just let me finish, please, and then I want to... Go ahead. No. Go ahead. <laughs> How does management know? I mean, Mary said when they get her check, when they... No, they don't I, know I when they get her check. Maybe. Nobody the reason I asked the question is the reason I asked the question because I'm assuming 667-1 is Golden Court, correct? There's 175 dollars here of late fees. Are those all Miss Ross Holly's 175 dollars? Because she said there was 250 dollars. Well, well, I'm sorry, I have to, I have to stop this. I'm sorry, just because we're not supposed to talk about individual tenants, um, and oh. this is. This, yes. this situation okay. is being taken care of. Okay, I'm sorry. It is. I'm sorry. If you would like, if you get permission for us to talk about this, we can talk yeah, about. Yeah, you have permission. It. You want us to talk about all of this? Sure. Are you sure? Is that is that the minutes are showing that? So the housing. I'm code. just asking about the late no. fees. I know, but all right. So <laughs> you should sure be one on on late fees. Harry can talk about my late fees. Only one. Okay. So can I answer him with the appropriate information? No, I'd rather have Mary because she's the one that gave told just told us all how the late fees work, and she's wrong. So let her make an explanation, no. as Harry just asked. So I'm not going to talk about personal tenants. I, I didn't say that. I was merely suggesting would it be a good idea for the person involved, let me do it, the person involved get with you and go over these late fees. And you. Can I, can I interrupt again? So, so I, just the procedure of the housing authority is when somebody is behind, they, set, they get a lease, they'll get, um, a, excuse me, not a lease violation, they get a copy of their tenant ledger first, so they're, they're advised that they are late. That happens a couple of times, and then the next step um, is if it's the first instance of a tenant, can you please stop saying that true? Because it's been followed. <clears throat> the next step is that the tenant is allowed a private conference with the, the property managers or the, the management to discuss the issue. Um, sometimes tenants take us up on that, sometimes they don't. The step after that is that there's a notice to quit and we go to housing court. And then through housing court, there's all opportunities to mediate. And for both sides to, to present their case, the judge makes the ruling on this. So this is, the, this is laid out in the lease. This is the policy of the housing authority. Our chief, I'd like to say that. Go ahead. Hi, Sue Oppenheimer, Golden Court. Anyway, the biggest thing is that Mary, I mean, that Pamela said is the $25 late fee is on our lease. But the thing to remember is it's only been enacted two months ago. And, and, we, and the thing is, is that how can you talk about, we've been run by Amherst Housing for three years. Why? My question is, why did you decide to do it when you did it? And where does that money go? And, and how many other housing authorities in Massachusetts that are fully funded by state housing are also paying these $25 late fees? 
The thing we have to remember is we're low income and we're disabled housing. These $25 late fees, these $65 lockout fees, somebody, we bring them up meeting after meeting way before this board. Well, we didn't have a $25 late fee, but the $65 lockout fee we brought up, we never have a resolve. One of the reasons that tenants are so frustrated here is when we bring things up, meeting after meeting, they go on for years. People say, oh, that's old business. business. But guess what? It's a continuum. Because we can't knock any of these things off of our list okay. because they're not, they're not dealt with. So what I'm saying, Reese, who had plenty of time to talk, and now she's saying that I'm too long. Okay. I just wanted you to know that yeah. we're frustrated. We want a board, and hopefully this board will allow us to knock some of these things off the list. We're going to investigate the $25 late fee. We're going to investigate the $65 lockout fee. We're going to talk to other housing authorities in the state of Massachusetts. How many of them that are 100% funded by state money are having to pay these late fees? And why all of a sudden? We ask these questions over and over. Right. And guess right. what? We don't get answers. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Next meeting, we'll look at that. Me, motion made to adjourn. No, no, we have to so, the next so, meeting. What? What's the date? Oh, the for date for the next meeting. What is the date for the next meeting? Um, February. What? What, Harry? Do you, what's the date for the next meeting? Do you know? Or do you know? The, I, I don't know. Got a calendar. Who, set, who sets the date? The we, chairman sets the date. Oh. Okay. The chairman sets the date and the time. Yeah. Is that you, Chuck? Yeah, the chairman does nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, All right, the, 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 third, the, the, the third Tuesday of every month. So could, yeah. we, could we push that out to the fourth so we will have enough time to get the financials from Gary to pace? Especially for, for February because it's a short month. So the 14th is getting it. The fourth a Tuesday? The, yeah, the, the fourth That's Tuesday. The day. Is that okay with the board? Fourth Tuesday of the month? It's the 27th. Oh, no, 28th. 28th. 28th, right? I actually think it's the... Bruce says 28th is a Tuesday. Yes. 11 o'clock? Yeah. Okay. Do you want a motion to adjourn? Yes. Uh, I move that we adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.